inquire on the totally awesome fishing show set, please. Cameras rolling. And action. Oh man, I've done it again. Oh, it's twice in a row. Welcome to the totally awesome fishing show, the greatest fishing show in the world, on YouTube, in Britain. It's the greatest show, and you guys know it, because we give you loads of tips, and another tip's coming your way right now, is how to turn these plastic teaspoons, what's he on now, what's he smoking, into these. like those love things like this now they're dead easy to make I picked these up I can't tell you I think they were like one pound 75 or a dollar for 10 for 10 let's get cracking and show you how to make a place attractor spoon okay, you know, as you can see there are the spoons I've already separated all the handles I've sawn them off here but I've sawn them off I'll just show you using a regular junior hacksaw which has a fine blade you don't want a coarse blade to cut these these are plastic picnic spoons now they're normally in white or they come in clear these happen to be ho 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 beautiful flashy silver now i've used these to good effect off the south coast of england a variety of species love them two ways to rig them you can either make what i call an inline flasher spoon or you can use a revolving spoon so i've cut those off from the stem but here's quite the important bit to remember you want to cut it right on the knuckle there because the plastic is quite thick into the bowl of the spoon just there. That's the thickest part and I'm going to round that to take those rough edges where I've sawn it. Smooth that off either with a surf form and then sandpaper and I'm going to drill through there. Now we'll do the inline spoon just to give you an idea. Here's a real old one. This is a metal one. Just a standard metal one out of a tackle shop. And as you can see it's got a hole at either end and a very slight bow in the middle. But tell you what guys, not far off the size of that plastic one is it? And what I like about this, this is metal, only, albeit only probably an alloy or something, very very light, but this is even lighter. That one is absolutely brilliant. And do these work or what? Let's get cracking, let's fire that edge off first. It can be quite a coarse plastic, so what I do, I use the upside down of a surfform blade. I don't want to get my fingers on there. So health and safety people, you can wear gloves, glasses, whatever you want, all that stuff. I just want to take that angle off there. So I'm going to rub it like this. It doesn't take much because don't forget these are only, they're only plastic. I'm, I'm sort of rolling it as I go. And you can do loads and loads of these. They take no time at all to do. And boy, do they save you some money. Ah, there we go. That's rounded the rough. You're just taking the rough end of the plastic off just like this. In fact, I finish it off with a little piece of sandpaper here. They're only cheap and cheerful. But they love them, the fish. They absolutely love them. All manner of species. Now there, you pretty well don't know which that end, that end is or that end is. I've rounded it off. But you might just be able to see where the bowl of the spoon absolutely flanges to come up into the stalk there where I've cut it off. That's the thick part, that's just where they're moulded. When they make these spoons, it's a little bit thicker and that's great to drill through. This side, the front lip, if you're doing an inline spoon, which is what this is, what I call an inline, it just wobbles rather than revolves. We'll do the inline one first and show you. You just got a drill hole there, drill hole here. The stem's strong, the front is weak. Just rest the drill on to do it. Okay, just so you know how we do it, just move those out of the way. Don't drill like that and go straight through the bench, will you? Just get a piece of scrap wood. There we go. And just lightly rest the drill. Make sure it's not on hammer, the setting. There you can see the size. Don't ask me what size it is. It's the size the fishing line goes through. That's what size it is. Rest the bowl just flat like this. And watch your finger. Just very, very light. I've barely got the weight of the drill on there 
before it's a joker, you know when it bites, when it bites it's going to try and revolve. It's through now, I can feel it through now. And look, I drill into the wood, move it up and down. No damage to the desk, that's the first hole, that's the one in the stem. Turn it round. Be very careful on this front edge one. Do not use much pressure at all. Slower speed probably better cutting through this front edge of the plastic. I'm going to give it a squirt anyway. And this is for making the inline spoon. Just going through now to feel it going through. It's through. It's into the wood and I can just slide up and down the stem as I'm turning like that. Drill goes away. I can't see that. If you press too hard that'll that'll split. Now all that remains for me to do, a couple of split rings on here, and then I can attach one into my hook and bees and one into my fishing line. Okay, so I've got the holes drilled there. Hopefully you can see them. I've put a split ring here, a split ring here. A barrel swivel just there, barrel swivel here. Now I find these toe best pulling them. That's the end, what we call the inline play spoon. Pulling them from the stem where I cut the stem off and rounded it off because you probably can't see, but it's a very slight kick off, a very slight kick off of angle. So when you're actually bumping that along the seabed, if you're drifting or it's in the tide, the tide actually catches that edge there and it just gives it that sort of wobbling factor. So this end up here, which is the stem end, that one there, that goes up here to the fishing line, that goes up to your lead, etc., and your boom. Then we come down to the spoon, and then that's the only length I put. Well, I would guess that'd be one, two, about four inches, four inches from the spoon itself. I've got two beads and a hook. Now, the other thing I do, this is just a regular 2-0, hook there, an Aberdeen hook. I haven't pulled that down purposely yet, just to show you this. But if I pull that knot down, like that, just a regular tuck blood, you might or might not be able to see it. But I've left a quarter of an inch tag end up there. I know normally you'd snip that off, because it's nice, nice and neat and tidy, and us anglers like to be tidy, but I've left it there. You should be able to see it, because that helps hold the worm on the hook. I haven't got any worms with me, but I'm going to show you with a rubber grub. Okay, here we go. I just made that slightly wet, that hook. This is the rubber grub. Now you can use these, a lot of guys are using these, but let's imagine it's a worm. Let's imagine it's a ragworm or a lugworm. Go straight through the end of the worm, just as I'm doing here with this plastic one. Thread it all the way around. I'm hoping it's gonna be long enough just to show you. Thread it right around the worm, but just pull the head of the worm, look up over that tag in there, that little tag, it doesn't look much pop, it's just gone over, there. But that is enough just to stop that, if a fish is pulling on it, the last thing you want is this, look, I'm gonna do it. The last thing you want is a bite on the tail and it pulls the bait right round. So if you threaded a worm up the hook and yours comes back with this, in that shape, you know you've had a bite. It's not been supported. So push the worm up just over that tag end like that the rest of the ragworm will be around here. I'm just going to pop it on the hook like that to straighten it out. And that is how it will be with a ragworm as an inline rig. The bead comes down there. Little, you can put any colour bead. You don't have to have red. I just happen to have red. But ragworm, squid, lugworm, anything you like. Little strip baits. But only about four inches to the inline spoon. And that is the inline flasher. And that's basically what it does in the tide. But even better is the one where I just attach it at the top here, at, right at the top, and just leave it as a revolving spoon. Boy, that's the one to use. That's one, let's look at the second one. Right, again, I'm gonna just drill out there through the base of the stem. That's through, through the base of the stem there. Same procedure. Take the edges off it, take the rough edges off it, and this one will be a revolving blade. That's a, that's a huge difference. And this one I found to be really, really good. Smooth hounds, thornback skate, small eye bray, the proverbial dogfish, you name it. They all seem to go for this. And boy, do these flash in the water. Just take the edge off of that. Job done. Now, let me show you what I do with this one. 
Okay, here we go. I'm using a 50 pound model on this guy, just so you can see it. Rod and line comes from down here. You thread it down, a barrel swivel. Again, I'm using a really big barrel swivel, so you can see it. 50 pound line, ordinarily would be about 20 or 30. And then what I do is I slide the blade up. Now watch the way I slide in the blade through the stem. Now normally, if I had the swivel there, very small swivel, I'll admit, if I had the swivel there, I feel that would jam and stop it evolving. So to give it something to rub against, I got this idea from salmon fishermen who use sort of what they call spinning glows over in British Columbia when I was salmon fishing. Put a bead on there like that, okay? And then it revolves touching against that bead. The bead's up against the plastic first, I'll show you. Just put this on this. It's all very Heath Robertson, just to give you an idea. I won't give it four just to get me a, a knot to butt up against, just to give you the guide. So there we go. There's your swivel. Real line's coming up here. Down it comes like this, and let's snip that one off a little bit neater than that. More haste, less speed. Now, if you can see that there now, that slides up and down. Spoon slide, slides up and down there, that little spoon comes up against the plastic bead which comes up against the knot so the knot doesn't jam if I didn't have the bead that knot might pinch in there and stop it spinning now that bites the tide unbelievably and just does Look, I can do it with my hand it's doing this all the time in the tide now if you're drifting along same thing it's going to revolve you can have them in line you can have a load of them and from there you can decide exactly how far you want to come before you get the hook so I would say Let's cut this. I would, and I guess this is my success rate, I would say, will be as close as this. I'm going to tie that on there for you. Again, it's only really Heath Robinson. It's about, I bet that's barely six inches, I would think. Now, you can make it longer, but I don't see the point because flatfish, place especially, I'm only doing three or four turns here, place especially are attracted to it. So why would you put your bait miles away from the plastic? Yeah. I'm going to see if I can pull that down. I'm in 50 pound mono, so it's a little bit thicker. I'd normally be using 20, and I'll tell you what I don't like. I don't like using fluorocarbon. Not really a love of flu fluoro. I find it very, very stiff and not tend to slide through. So there you've got the rig. There's the spinner, the revolving one. In contrast, the other one, which was what we called an inline one, it wobbles. That one was a wobbling spoon. And the same principle, look, I got maybe six inches. And I'll tell you what they're catching on lately. I don't know what or where you get these. I got these on a trip to America. They're American bass fishing worms, really. But they've got this little wiggly tail. So you can put these on there. I'm going to wet this hook shank, because if you do put a bit of spit on there with rubber, especially worms, they'll go right round it nicely. And these rubber grubs and artificials people have been catching loads and loads of places they're not even bothering with ragworm lugworm or anything they're just doing that they're popping it over the eye just like that and they're leaving it as a grub and as you as you jig it what they call hopping along the bottom this little flat piece this is flat rubber that's circular this is flat that's the body this is the tail that straightens out and it flutters and wiggles in the current so there you can get a rough idea what it's like revolving spoon and either your Ragworm, lugworm, squid, cocktail baits, or indeed grubs. That's the rig there. So there you have a couple of different ways of making place attractor spoons. You've got the inline one, which turns on the main line like this, fluttering in the tide, with either a grub, a rubber worm, or real bait behind it. Swivels there. You've got, which is my personal favourite for the flatties really, the revolving spoon like this. And that really does whip round in the tide. You can see it spinning there. If I get it going like a Catherine wheel, this one. And again, dropping down six, eight, maybe eight inches that is. Maybe eight inches from the spoon there, I suppose. So I'm right about that. But don't tell anybody. Do not tell anybody. My secret rig. You see me cut up those tablespoons, but you can also buy plastic picnic spoons in that silver in teaspoon size. And I put these in a triple tandem rig like this. And boy, do the fish love them. That thrums around in the tide. You can see them all spinning, all spinning. They're all on their little plastic stopper beads. I don't put any swivel to this. Double loop a knot round each bead to hold the bead in place. So that spins like this. 
up to your bait again equidistant say four inches four inches maybe six inches to the bait just there and again you can either use artificials or you can use the real thing so that is the totally awesome secret rig place smooth house scape rays cod pollock you name it it's got to be worth a try guys totally awesome fishing show again you've seen it here first out there on the water let's get the weather good get out there give it a try and these plastic spoons do work if you don't believe us check out some of our place films and you'll see fish being caught on those good luck with it Thank you.